Hey nerds, welcome back to Crash Course Curiosities. I'm Jessica, and today we're going to dive into a civilization called Elamon. Elamon is not as well known as those in Mesopotamia or Egypt, but it is still interesting, very interesting within itself. So my buddies and I are going to show you what it's all about. Let's begin. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a civilization is a relatively high level of cultural and technological development. Specifically, the stage of cultural development at which writing and the keeping of written records are attained. So what exactly does it mean to be civilized? Well, a civilization has six characteristics that make it up. First, cities. The first civilization settled near river valleys as it was the most accessible to water and other resources they needed to survive. Second, a working government. Without overarching authority, the people within the civilizations will be in frequent conflict with each other, much like the Mesopotamian civilization. Third, religion. All civilizations developed religions to explain the forces of nature and their roles in the world. Fourth, a social structure based on economy arose with the creation of civilizations. Fifth, writing. Writing was used for creative expression and record keeping in the first civilizations. Finally, art. Painters and sculptors portrayed stories of nature and provided depictions of the gods. Elamon was a civilization created in 700 BCE in present-day Australia. Like all civilizations, it had both advantages and disadvantages with its environmental features. One of the many advantages of the environment of Elamon is the river that run, runs right through the center of the civilization. A disadvantage of the civilization is that it is always surrounded by fire. Let us talk more about the creation of Elamon first. It is believed that the Elamon civilization was started by the five elements, fire, water, earth, air, and ether. The story goes as follows. There was nothing present, no air, no water, no earth, just fire everywhere. The heat from the fire did not let for anything to grow. Ignis the fire god had absolute control for centuries. It was then one day that Nero the water goddess appeared. With the wave of her hand, she skillfully and gracefully contained the fire and started to establish a civilization using Ignis's fire as a heat source. Ignis, not used to being restrained, raised the creation of the civilization and infuriated Nero. To this, Nero completely extinguished the fire and exiled Ignis from the area. With Ignis out of sight, Nero started to reconstruct her civilization. She first created a river to keep her resources abundant and accessible. With this, she invited Terra, the Earth Goddess, to help her in the reconstruction of her civilization. Seeing from the heavens what Nero and Terra were up to and knowing that without any air, no life forms can live, Geza, the Earth Goddess, also came to help in the restoration of the civilization. Finally, with earth, water, and air, various types of plants and animals were brought to enjoy their new home. But Nero, Terra, and Geza felt something missing. They wanted intelligent creatures to be part of their civilization too. Not knowing where to go or how to make these creatures, they went to Ukjen, the god for ether. He created the intelligence, intelligent creatures that Nero, Geza, and Terra wanted. Those creatures are what we call today humans. With this, a functional society named Elemand started to form. As stated previously, all civilizations developed religions to explain the force of nature and their roles in the world. From the creation story that was just told, we see what each god and goddess was known for creating, but what exactly do the Elmanese people believe in? As we see in the artifact here, they have written down their belief system, which has allowed us to see exactly what the Elmanese believe in. They believe in what is called the five elements. Number one, people can be both gentle and evil. Number two, one must show constant faith in order to be pure. Number three, never forget your roots. Number four, those who aren't present have the greatest influences on us. And number five, accept the unknown in order to move forward. Each of these elements come from an element which was created, which was used in the creation of Elemant. Number one is representative of fire. Number two is representative of water. Number three is representative of earth. Number four is representative of air. And number five is representative of ether. 
When Nero Terangezo went to Ukjen to ask for intelligence in their civilization, he created humans to be morphed out of plants. In addition to this, he also created a tool that will that these intelligent creatures can use to keep track of how fast things are going. He named this intangible idea time. As we can see in the artifact we have, everything is based off of what we is known today as the base 10 system. For time, there were 100 seconds in a minute, 100 minutes in an hour, 10 days in a week, 10 weeks in a month, and 10 months in a year. With the creation of humans and all of them living in the same civilization, the people started to convert from hunting to agriculture. The addition of agriculture allowed for people to have a surplus amount of food which allowed the Elmanese people to undergo the process of job specialization. A few of the job sectors that were created include hunting and farming, fishing, scribing, and much more. Of course, with the addition of different jobs within Elaman, a social hierarchy began to form. The main structure of the social hierarchy was based on gender and age. Obviously, the children were lower on the hierarchy level than elders, and women were higher on the social level than men since they were the ones that kept the population growing. Another notable feature of Elaman is that they do not believe in achievements. They believe that all things are done because the gods want it to happen. Therefore, the humans have no right to credit for it. If humans were to take credit for it, they have no right to surpass the gods. The specific social hierarchy of Elaman is children, men, women, and elders. And gods. The government of Elaman was based solely on one person and her connection to the gods. This person is usually the oldest female in Elaman. Going back to the creation of Elaman, with everything running smoothly, a small, seemingly harmless group of outsiders started to periodically visit the civilization. The inhabitants did not think anything of them and humbly welcomed them to their society. Unfortunately, what they did not know was that the seemingly harmless group of outsiders, known as Firelets, directly served Ignis. After the Firelets gained trust in the hearts of the inhabitants, one of them killed the chief of the society. After realizing how dangerous the Firelets were and reacting in rage with the death of their chief, the people took defense for themselves and killed numerous numbers of Firelets. During this conflict, the Elmanese created weapons that allowed for them to win the war they were fighting with the Firelets. Although they had won the war, it still left Elaman in ruins. This war of the Elmanis and the Firelets can be seen in the ex excavation site of Yabulif. As you can see here, the remains of the Elmanis and the ways of living can be seen. We can also see multiple figures drawn onto the rocks that embody both man and animal. This is representative of the close relationship the Elmanis had between man and animal. Another interesting thing that was found in the excavation site near Yabolib is the explanation for the periodic flooding and harsh rains Elaman faced along with the creation of seasons. On this tablet here we see a face in what we think used to be blue and waves at the bottom of the rocks and lines coming from the top. We can interpret it to be Nero creating floods and harsh rains to wash away the evil spirits of the firelets which are seen by the orange dots. An interesting artifact that was found near the excavation sites of Yabolib is an explanation for the seasons of Elaman. On this rock we see a orange face which is thought to represent Ignis and on the other side we see a blue face which is thought to represent Nero. The drawings of Nero and Ignis on the same rock with the grid between them can be thought to represent the four seasons. The ones on the left Summer and fall is what Ignis is known to take care of because of the heat, and the ones on the right, winter and spring, is what Nero is known to take care of because of the snow and the rain. Elamon is pretty cool, right? I mean, it's just something else. Alright nerds, it's time to skedaddle. This is Crash Course Curiosities, and I bid you farewell.